This is Bob WB3T and this is the latest of my Heathkit HW8 restorations. This one belongs to a guy named Chuck who sent it in with low power and uh, some considerable cosmetic issues. Uh, cabinet was uh, pretty scraped up, scratched up, dinged up, paint worn off. Uh, some goo from the feet on the bottom had to be cleaned up. I mean it was really bad. It was all over the, the bottom of the case. So this got um, it's got the full cosmetic treatment, everything cleaned up, knobs uh, cleaned off thoroughly, uh, face, plate, face plate cleaned, uh, the dial scale uh, was uh, removed and replaced with a new one, uh, made on cardstock on the computer. Um, if, I could, if I could find the old one, it's pretty gross. Something had been spilled into it and the, the stains just would not come off and they were deep. So uh, anyway, that all got fixed and uh, cleaned up the, uh, the plastic window and the, and the indicator. Uh, what else did I do with this cosmetically? Uh, maybe that's about it. So the, the mixer FET was blown on this, which was uh, creating the low output power condition. Uh, the RF level to the driver transistor in transmit mode was very low. It was about a fifth to a tenth, depending on band of what it should be. Uh, so the... Uh, the new FET fixed that problem and then I went through the alignment procedure. Still had low power on 40 meters so I, I uh, started troubleshooting, checking levels and everything was fine right up to the output uh, filter and so of course I suspected the aging uh, um, output coils, the toroids in that circuit, they can sometimes be a problem and, and that's what it turned out to be. They were measuring a little over 10 microhenry spec calls for seven so I uh, removed a couple of turns off of each and put them back on the bridge until I got seven and put them back in and got about another half watt so alright so what I'm going to do is run through uh, the transmit section on each and I'm going to I'm just going to set this uh, about 40 kilohertz above the bottom of each band um, which is about uh, the middle of the CW band for each of these uh, four bands that the HW8 will operate on and we'll just peek it up and see what we've got. So on 80 meters we got a, mm, just about 2.1 watts on the RF meter. On 40 meters we've got about 1.5, almost 1.6 on four, uh, 14 megahertz. On 20 meters we've got a little bit more, about 1.6, 1.7 and then on 15 meters we've got about 1.4 and these are pretty consistent from the top of the bottom from the top to the bottom of each band uh, current draw uh, on this radio measured at 13.3 volts DC input was 527 milliamps on 80 meters 487 on 40 meters 502 on 20 meters and 413 milliamps on 15 meters Receive uh, current was consistent uh, across all bands, across each band at 96 milliamps. It was very consistent and uh, actually a pretty nice uh, current draw for a receiver of this quality. Direct conversion receiver, but a very good one. I'm going to turn off that audio. And now we'll fire up the spectrum analyzer and we'll take a look at energy content across each band. We'll go back to uh, go back to 80 meters and peak it up on the relative power meter. Of course the power meter is now disconnected. And uh, we'll take a look at the spectrum analyzer. And for just you know as a quick description for those of you not familiar with spectrum analyzers, uh, basically this will display the frequency content across the spectrum uh, for the transmitted signal. So let's fire this up on 80 meters and basically what you see here is the fundamental. This is the zero uh, beat going into the, the analyzer receiver circuits. And here's what we have. This is actually the 80 meter signal. Uh, I have this set for 2 megahertz per division and you're just about, if we take this down so you can see the peak on the zero, set that on the zero line you'll find that, oh just for kicks, let's open this up to one megahertz per division so it'll be real obvious and there's the zero there is your 
80 meter signal and as you can see that is one two three and a half divisions or three and a half megahertz up from zero so there's your there's your 80 meter signal and uh, let's open this up now so we can see harmonics again there's your zero there's your fundamental let's put that at the top line and actually make some measurements turn a little filtering on so your 80 meters is here and then right here your second uh, harmonic is about 50 db below the top the spec for a radio like this in the days it was designed and that's what the fcc goes by is uh, 30 dbc or 30 db below the carrier so your second harmonic here is actually 50 and your third harmonic is about 48 well within spec and of course all the other spectral lines are well within spec so that is your 80 meter signal nice and clean and now we'll switch pardon my elbow and we'll switch over to 40 meters peak that up and open up the bandwidth a little bit so we can see all the harmonics associated with the 40 meter signal and again there's your zero there's your 40 meter signal we got about 45 46 dbc on second and third harmonics and nothing else above that so that's a nice clean signal as well and then once we switch up to 20 meters we'll peak that up now here's where you see a little you know 20 and 15 on the hwa uh, typically have a little bit of what we call close-in spurious content those are these small lines in here but as you can see they're also well below 30 so not in violation and the second harmonic here is measuring about 46 47 I know it looks on this display about 46 but you know if you really open it up add some filtering and zoom in you see it's really a little bit lower than that it's actually about 48 so again well below the 30 dB spec for harmonics on the handbands for a 70s era transceiver anything I forget what year it changed it was probably early 90s but the spec did go to 40 dBc it doesn't matter this particular HW8 passes that spec as well let's fire this up on 15 meters peak it up you still see all the close-in spurs below 40 uh, you see 50 here 52 or so here on 2f and 3f so it's a nice clean radio uh, so it's, it's operating very nicely at this point and ready to go on the air. Uh, this is um, all the bench testing that I'll do on this radio. It's practically done everything you could do anyway. We looked at power, we looked at spurs and harmonics, we looked at current draw. Um, the next thing to do would be to put it on the air and make some contacts with it. So I'm going to spend the next few days actually doing that and once I've made at least one successful contact on each of the bands uh, then this will be ready to go back to Chuck. Thanks for watching. Hope this was entertaining for you. 73, and we'll see you on the air. WB3T.